What am I going to get Campbell for Christmas? Oh, wow! Look at this big gift! It has my name on it. It must be for me. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Christmas Week here on Let's Talk in English on PTS and the radio. My name's Andrea. Now, do you think I should open this gift? Yeah. Okay, I will. I wonder what's inside. Merry Christmas! <laughs> Hi everyone. I'm Campbell. So Andrea, did you like your gift? Wow, Campbell. I think I'm still a little bit in shock. <laughs> well, I wanted to do something fun and special for you. Well, you did that. I've never had a gift jump out of a box before. Well, you know that I like to surprise you. Yes, I do know that. Okay. Well, yesterday Jake gave Allie her Christmas present. He wrote her a song. No one had ever written a song for Allie before, and you know, I've never gotten a gift like the one I got today. <laughs> so, Andrea, did you get my Christmas present yet? Oh. Uh, not yet, but I have something else to give you. It's for you and the students. Today's mission: What does Allie give Jake? What does Allie give Jake? Well, I'm sure we'll find the answer in Portland. Let's go to Portland. Here's conversation A. Thank you, Jake. That was beautiful. You're welcome. Okay, it's my turn. What's this? Open it. You'll find out. A drawing of me playing the guitar. Wow, Allie, did you draw this? Yes. Do you like it? It's great. Thank you. I didn't know you could draw. I didn't know you could write songs. I guess there are lots of things we don't know about each other. Jake didn't know that Allie could draw, and Allie didn't know that Jake could write songs. Right. I guess there are a lot of things they still don't know about each other. Okay, Andrea, it's your turn. Oh, that's right. It's my turn to start teaching our keyword. And our keyword is turn. Turn. Your turn is a time when it's your chance to do something. Right. When it's your chance to do something, then it's your turn. We can say it's your turn to use the computer, or it's your turn to play tennis. Right. Or it's your turn to wash the dishes. It's your turn to take out the garbage. In our conversation, it was Allie's turn to give Jake his present. Right when Jake gets the present, he says, "Wow, Allie, did you draw this?" Now let's learn this keyword. Draw. Draw. When you draw, you make a picture with a pen or a pencil. When you draw, you make a picture. Do you know how to draw? Some people can draw really well. Oh, Campbell, I can draw. I can draw a picture of you. Let me see.、Um, you're gonna make a picture of me. I'm going to draw a picture of you. Oh, wow, Andrea! I didn't know you could draw. Oh, look. This is my drawing of Campbell. Um, Andrea, that doesn't look anything like me. Well, sure it does. It's cute. We also found the answer to today's mission in this conversation. What does Allie give Jake? What does Allie give Jake? Allie gives Jake a drawing of himself playing the guitar.
And I'm going to give Campbell this drawing that I drew just for him. There you go, Campbell. Wow, thank you. Now let's you. learn more from Thomas. Hey, in your song, you promised to always be honest with me. Did you really mean that? Yes, I did. Good. Then may I ask you a question? Sure. How do you feel about me? Well, you're a great girl, and if I'm going to be honest, I like you a lot. I like you too, Jake. Except... Except you're not ready to date anyone right now. Right. Finally! After a long year, Jake and Allie finally tell each other that they like each other. Except... Except Allie's not ready to date anyone right now. And I can understand that. Allie just broke up with Matt a few months ago. And even if she does like Jake, she's probably not ready to have another boyfriend yet. I think you're right. Well, it's good that our friends are being honest with each other. I think that's very important. I agree. Okay, let's look at our key words from this conversation. Our first word is promise. Promise. When you promise something, this means that you say that you will do something for sure. Yes, when you promise to do something, that means you will do it. For example, I promise I'll take you out for dinner next week. What I'm saying is that I will really take you out to dinner next week, for sure. Now, if you promise to do something, make sure you do it. Now, what did Jake promise Allie in his song? He promised to always be honest with Allie. Right. Let's learn this keyword, honest. Honest. If someone is honest, this means they always tell the truth. An honest person doesn't lie. If you're honest, you really share how you feel. Well, Jake is being honest. He told Allie how he really feels about her. Okay, well, let's learn some more from Thomas. That's okay, Allie. I understand. I'm not sure I'm ready to date either. You're not? No, I like you a lot. And I do want to date you, but I don't want to rush into anything. I'm so glad to hear you say that. It's better to take things slowly. That way we can be careful not to hurt each other. Right. Wow. It's great that Allie and Jake can be so honest with each other. Jake understands how Allie's feeling. He's also not sure if he's ready to date. He likes Allie a lot, but he doesn't want to rush into anything, even though he does want to date Allie. Well, sounds like Jake is really listening to what Matt said. Allie says our calendar phrase, I'm so glad to hear you say that. I'm so glad to hear you say that. Now you can say this when you're really happy about what someone has just said. Or if you agree with what someone said. That's right. I'm so glad to hear you say that. Jake says it's better to take things slowly. Now we see a sentence pattern here. It's better to plus verb. Now, if you want to share how you feel about something, or you want to tell someone what you think is the best choice, you can use this sentence pattern. It's better to eat healthy food. It's better to go to bed early. It's better to travel with a friend. It's better to save up money than to spend it all the time. That's right. And it's better to practice every day, with English especially. Let's learn more from Thomas. Keywords.
Okay, friends, it's time to review our key words. It's your turn to practice them. And our first key word is turn. Turn. It's Nancy's turn to cook dinner tonight. She's going to make pizza. Draw. Draw. Wow, Lamont, you can draw really well. This picture looks just like me. Promise. Promise. When John and Sue got married, they promised to love each other forever. Honest. Honest. Daphne is honest. She always tells the truth. Okay, let's review one more time. Turn. Turn. Draw. Draw. Promise. Promise. Honest. Honest. Thank you and good job. Now let's review day four of Home Sweet Home. <laughs> Thank you, Jake. That was beautiful. You're welcome. Okay, it's my turn. What's this? Open it. You'll find out. A drawing of me playing the guitar? Wow! Allie, did you draw this? Yes. Do you like it? It's great. Thank you. I didn't know you could draw. I didn't know you could write songs. I guess there are lots of things we don't know about each other. Hey, in your song, you promised to always be honest with me. Did you really mean that? Yes, I did. Good. Then may I ask you a question? Sure. How do you feel about me? Well, you're a great girl, and if I'm going to be honest, I like you a lot. I like you too, Jake. Except. Except you are not ready to date anyone right now. Right. That's okay, Allie. I understand. I'm not sure I'm ready to date either. You're not. No, I like you a lot, and I do want to date you, but I don't want to rush into anything. I'm so glad to hear you say that. It's better to take things slowly. That way, we can be careful not to hurt each other. Right. Movie minute. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas, just like the ones I used to know. Hey everyone, Merry Christmas! Christmas is my favorite holiday. I see Allie and Mandy are wrapping some Christmas gifts. Isn't this a beautiful tree? Most Americans have a Christmas tree in their house. But the custom started in Germany a long, long time ago. When Germans came to live in America, they brought the tradition with them. What would Christmas be without Santa? Children believe Santa brings gifts to them on Christmas. He comes down the chimney into the house. The children leave a plate of cookies and a glass of milk by the fireplace for Santa. He must get tired delivering all those gifts. Santa Claus may bring gifts. Oh, Andrea, this gift is perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. Really? Yes. Thank you. Oh, hi everyone. Welcome to Christmas week here on Let's Talk in English on PTS and the radio. My name is Campbell. And I'm Andrea. Today we finish our last day of Home Sweet Home, and it's the last day of our Portland story.
It's been a great year with Ali, Mandy, Matt, and Jake, and their families and friends. We've learned a lot, and we've seen a lot this year too. Yes, remember when they first heard the news that they're going to Portland? Well, they weren't very happy. But over the past year, we've seen that Portland has become a very special place for them. And you know, I think Portland has become a very special place for us too. Hey, Andrea, look! There's another gift for us under the tree. I think we should open it together. Yes, let's do that. I wonder what's inside. Oh, look! It's a picture of our friends in Portland. What a special way to remember them. Oh, Andrea, do we really have to say goodbye? Well, yes, Campbell, we do. But it's really sad. Don't worry, Campbell. You'll be okay. Here's something that will cheer you up. Today's mission: How does Ali feel about Portland? How does Ali feel about Portland? Well, friends, let's go join our friends in Portland for one last time. It's the last day of home sweet home. So, what do we do now? Well, let's keep getting to know each other better as friends. That's a good idea. And then, maybe in a few months, if we're still interested, we can start dating. Exactly. That sounds good to me. And in case you're wondering, don't worry. I'll still be interested. I hope so. Well, Jake and Ali, that sounds like a really good plan. I'm glad you two are going to take it slow. You don't have to hurry. Spend time getting to know each other better as friends. Right, and then in a few months, if you're still interested in each other, you can start dating. You know, I think it's a good idea. That way, they can make sure they don't rush into anything. All right, let's learn our keyword: get to know someone. Get to know someone. When you get to know someone, this means you spend time with them and learn about them. When you get to know someone, you find out more about who they are. Yes, when you get to know someone, you learn about their likes and their dislikes. You also learn about the things they care about. It takes time to get to know someone. You need to spend time with someone to get to know them. The more time you spend with them, the more you get to know them. Exactly. Now let's learn that keyword. Exactly. Exactly. We use exactly to say that something is right. If you agree with something someone has said, you can say exactly. So you mean if I say something that you agree with, you can say exactly? Exactly. Oh, okay. Well, then it's time to go see Thomas, right? Exactly. Let's go. <laughs> What are you so happy about? Jake just told me that he likes me. He did, and and we've decided not to date. What? Why? We want to take things slowly. What do you mean? Keep getting to know each other better as friends first. Then maybe in a few months we'll start dating if we're still interested. Oh, okay. I guess that makes sense. Yes, that does make sense. You know, it's great to see Ali so happy. Now, what is she so happy about? Well, Jake told her that he likes her, and they've decided not to date. Mandy is shocked, but she understands after Ali tells her more. 
She and Jake want to take things slowly. They want to get to know each other better as friends first. And then maybe in a few months they'll start dating. Yes, that does make sense. Now let's learn our keywords from this conversation. Decide. Decide. When you decide, you choose something after you think about it. When you decide to do something, you choose to do it after thinking about it. Now, Ali and Jake thought about dating, but then they decided not to date. We can say the Gibsons decided to go to Paris for Christmas. Sandy decided to eat at home tonight for dinner. Our next keyword is make sense. Make sense. When something makes sense, that means you understand it. Right. If something makes sense, then it's clear. You understand it. You think that it's right. Maybe your homework doesn't make sense to you. You can ask someone. Does this make sense? Right. Does this make sense? Do you understand what I'm saying? So, do our keywords make sense? Well, we hope so. If not, you'll learn more from Thomas. You know, I never thought I'd say this, but this year has been one of the best years of my life. Mine too. I'm really glad we moved here. Me too. I was so sad to leave Florida. I never thought I would like Portland. I remember. But here I am, a year later. I've fallen in love with Portland, and Portland has really started to feel like home. Well, it's about time. <laughs> Welcome home, Allie. Welcome home, Allie. I'm really glad that this has been a great year for you, and that this has been one of the best years of your life. Yes, you know we've really had a lot of fun with our friends in Portland this year. We've also had a lot of adventures, and we've learned a lot. I agree. It's really been a wonderful year. I'm really glad that Ali has learned to love Portland. And that Portland has really started to feel like home for her. Me too. Hey, that sounds like the answer to today's mission. Oh yeah, today's mission. How does Ali feel about Portland? How does Ali feel about Portland? Well, she's fallen in love with Portland, and Portland has really started to feel like home. That's great. Well, let's learn our keyword: fall in love. Fall in love. When you fall in love, this means you start to really like and care for somebody or something. Ali has fallen in love with Portland. That means she really likes Portland. She cares about the people there, and she's happy to be there. Right. When you fall in love, you start to feel love for something or someone. For example, Troy and Angela are falling in love. They want to get married one day. Steve fell in love with Asia. He'll live here for a long time. Okay. Well, Ali has fallen in love with Portland. Mandy says our calendar phrase: It's about time. It's about time. If you've been waiting for something to happen and it finally happens, you can say it's about time. Well, it's almost time to say goodbye to our friends in Portland. But before we do, let's go see Thomas. Keywords. Hey everyone, do you know what we're going to do now? Exactly, we're going to practice our keywords. Our first keyword is get to know someone. Get to know someone. Gloria just met Robert. She wants to get to know him. Exactly. Exactly. This gift is perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. Decide. 
decide. Should I open my gifts now or later? I can't decide. Makes sense. Makes sense. Daisy stayed up too late last night. It makes sense that she's tired. Fall in love. Fall in love. Jerry fell in love with Susan. He wants her to be his wife. Now let's say them together again. Get to know someone. Get to know someone. Exactly. Exactly. Decide. Decide. Make sense. Make sense. Fall in love. Fall in love. Hey, great job, everyone. Okay, well, let's go visit our friends in Portland one last time. So, what do we do now? Well, let's keep getting to know each other better as friends. That's a good idea. And then, maybe in a few months, if we're still interested, we can start dating. Exactly. That sounds good to me. And in case you're wondering. Don't worry, I'll still be interested. I hope so. <laughs> What are you so happy about? Jake just told me that he likes me. He did, and and we've decided not to date. What? Why? We want to take things slowly. What do you mean? Well, we want to keep getting to know each other better as friends first. Then maybe in a few months we'll start dating, if we're still interested. Oh, okay. I guess that makes sense. You know, I never thought I'd say this. But this year has been one of the best years of my life. Mine too. I'm really glad we moved here. Me too. I was so sad to leave Florida. I never thought I would like Portland. I remember. But here I am, a year later. I've fallen in love with Portland, and Portland has really started to feel like home. Well, it's about time. <laughs> Welcome home, Ally. Speak up. How about giving? How about giving? How about giving mom some flowers? How about giving Dad a book? How about giving Thomas a CD? I've been doing a lot of thinking about. I've been doing a lot of thinking about. I've been doing a lot of thinking about Christmas. I've been doing a lot of thinking about my job. I've been doing a lot of thinking about traveling to London. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. Dinner at your house sounds good to me. A movie sounds good to me. Trip to Paris sounds good to me. Calendar phrase. It's about time. It's about time. 也该是时候了 I finally found a girlfriend. It's about time. I think I'm in love. It's about time. 
I asked her to marry me. Really? What does she say? It's about time. It's about time. It's about time. 也该是时候了 Well, it's almost time to go. But before we do, let's practice our question of the day. Our question is: What is the best present you've ever received? The best present I've ever received is my watch. I've had this watch for over sixteen years. It was a very special gift from my parents, and I wear it every day. Wow, that's a great gift. What about you? Think about it and answer this question. We'll see you tomorrow on Let's Talk in English on PTS and the radio. And remember, learning English can be fun. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Silent night, holy night. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Saturday show here on Let's Talk in English on PTS and the radio. My name is Campbell, and I'm Andrea. Today is Christmas Eve. Yes, Christmas Eve, the day before Christmas. This week was our last week with our friends in Portland, and we learned how to talk about Christmas. Christmas is a special time. It's our favorite time of year. So, Andrea, what do you usually do on Christmas Eve? Well, when I'm at home with my family, we always go to church together. Then we eat a special meal. We sing Christmas carols around the Christmas tree and unwrap our gifts. You know, that sounds like what my family does too. My dad's a pastor, 牧师 so we always spend Christmas Eve at church. After church, we spend time together as a family, and we just enjoy the holiday. That's wonderful. Well, we've had a great year with our friends in Portland. Allie has fallen in love with Portland. Today, we're going to review our last week of the Portland story together again. Well, let's start our Christmas Eve review. <laughs> Honey, are you almost finished? Our guests will be here in an hour. I'm almost done. I just have to finish wrapping this present. Great. So, did you finish all your Christmas shopping? Yes, except for Allie's present. I don't know what to get her. Well, what kinds of things does she like? Lots of things: clothes, books, music. That's why I don't know what to get her. Well, I'm sure you'll think of something. Hey, Allie, Dad wants to know if you're ready to go. Almost. Let me just finish wrapping this gift. Hey, I have a question for you. What is it? What do you think I should get Jake for Christmas? Isn't it a little late to be thinking about that? Christmas is the day after tomorrow. I know, but I've been thinking about it for weeks, and I just don't know what to get. Well, Jake likes to play the guitar. How about giving him something for his guitar? I thought about that, but what could I get? Don't ask me. I don't know anything about guitars. So, what did you get for me? None of your business. You'll find out on Christmas. Okay. Well, you better hurry. Mom and Dad are waiting for us. Okay. I'll be right there. Matt, what are you doing here? Well, hi to you too. I thought your family was going to Hawaii for Christmas. We are. We're leaving in a few hours. I wanted to give you your present before we leave. You didn't have to do that. I know. That's what makes me such a great friend. I'm glad you're here. I've got a question for you. 
What is it? Well, I've been trying to think of something to get Allie for Christmas, and I was wondering if you had any ideas. Isn't it a little late to be buying Christmas presents? A little. I just really want to get her something special. I understand. Why don't you write her a song? Write her a song? Sure. You're really creative. You've got a great voice, and you play the guitar. Why not? Hmm. Okay. Great idea. Thanks, Matt. What are friends for? So, are you going to open your present? Oh, right. And I have a gift for you too. You know, I've been doing a lot of thinking about you and Ali. You have? Yes. And it's okay with me if you want to date her. It is? Yes. Just be careful, okay? Don't rush into anything. Thanks, Matt. You're a great friend. So are you. Well, I'd better go. Bye. Hello. Hi, Allie. It's Jake. Oh, hi, Jake. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hey, do you have any plans for tomorrow? Well, our family always spends Christmas Day together, but I'm free all day on the 26th. Great. Would you want to have lunch with me? I want to give you a Christmas present. Sure. I have something to give you too. Great. So I'll pick you up around 12:30. Sounds good. See you then. Bye. Thanks for lunch, Jake. It was really sweet of you to pay for me. You didn't have to do that. It's my pleasure. Here, have a seat. I want to give you your present. Okay. Now, it's not fancy or anything, but I hope it shows you how special you are to me. Thanks, Jake. I think you're special too. Okay, it's not the best present ever, but I wrote you a song. You did, Jake? That's wonderful. No one's ever written a song for me before. Don't get too excited. You haven't heard the song yet. I'm sure I'll love it. Now remember, it's not perfect. I haven't really had time to. Jake, it'll be great. Please just play the song. Okay. You, Jake. That was beautiful. You're welcome. Okay, it's my turn. What's this? Open it. You'll find out. A drawing of me playing the guitar? Wow, Allie, did you draw this? Yes. Do you like it? It's great. Thank you. I didn't know you could draw. I didn't know you could write songs. I guess there are lots of things we don't know about each other. Hey, in your song, you promised to always be honest with me. Did you really mean that? Yes, I did. Good. Then may I ask you a question? Sure. How do you feel about me? Well, you're a great girl, and if I'm going to be honest, I like you a lot. I like you too, Jake. Except. Except you are not ready to date anyone right now. Right. That's okay, Allie. 
I understand. I'm not sure I'm ready to date either. You're not? No, I like you a lot. And I do want to date you, but I don't want to rush into anything. I'm so glad to hear you say that. It's better to take things slowly. That way we can be careful not to hurt each other. Right. So, what do we do now? Well, let's keep getting to know each other better as friends. That's a good idea. And then, maybe in a few months, if we're still interested... We can start dating? Exactly. That sounds good to me. And in case you're wondering, don't worry. I'll still be interested. I hope so. What are you so happy about? Jake just told me that he likes me. He did? And? And we've decided not to date. What? Why? We want to take things slowly. What do you mean? Well, we want to keep getting to know each other better as friends first. Then maybe in a few months we'll start dating if we're still interested. Oh, okay. I guess that makes sense. You know, I never thought I'd say this, but this year has been one of the best years of my life. Mine too. I'm really glad we moved here. Me too. I was so sad to leave Florida. I never thought I would like Portland. I remember. But here I am, a year later. I've fallen in love with Portland. And Portland has really started to feel like home. Well, it's about time. <laughs> Welcome home, Allie. On the go. Campbell, watch this. You'll see water on fire. Whoa! Andrea, how did you do that? How did you get the fire to come out of the water like that? Well, you know, it's not magic. We're here at Tainan's Guanza Ling. This place is called Water Fire. Now, how does the water come out of the fire? Well, there's a rock with some cracks in it. Natural gas come out of these cracks. So if you light it on fire, it looks like the fire's coming out of the water. You know, Campbell, this water fire and the hot springs are two very famous things here. There's hot springs here? Oh, ow. You know, oh, Andrea, mm, my neck really hurts. Oh, 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 ow. My back is hurting a lot, too, now. Oh. Well, then, Campbell, I think we have to go to the hot spring. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. We better go. Let's go. On, On the, the go. go. Woo! Mom! I thought you said your neck and your back hurt. Oh, oh yeah. Ow. Oh, they hurt a lot. Oh, oh, oh. Um, but Andrea, are you sure this is a hot spring? It looks like muddy water to me. Well, yes, it is a hot spring. It's a geothermal salt hot spring. Yeah, and there's only three of them in the world. You know, this mud is really good for your skin. Well then, Andrea, here, let me help you put it on. I mean, we really need to take care of your skin. Well, that's true, Campbell, but I'm fine. Thank you, 
You know, after taking a bath in the clay mud, I feel so much better. Campbell, don't move. Don't move. There's, there's, there's a cannon, Pow, right behind us. Pow. <laughs> Wait a second. Andrea, this cannon doesn't even work. It's too old. Are you sure? Yes. We're here in Tainan's Fort Anping, Anping Gubao. And this cannon hasn't been used in years. It can't hurt anyone. Really? Yes. Ah! <laughs> The city of Tainan was Taiwan's first established town. It was the first stop for many immigrants. Yi Ming. In 1842, the Dutch, He Lan Ren, came and built the fort of Anping. After 300 years, there have been many changes. Fort Anping doesn't look like it did when the Dutch first built it. Here in Taiwan's oldest city, many traditional artists still come to practice their traditional art form. Hey, Campbell, I'd like you to meet Mr. Lin. Oh, Lin 先生,你好。你好。你今天要教我们什么? He's going to teach us how to embroider. Mr. Lin has been embroidering for 48 years. You know, it takes two to three months to finish a beautiful piece of art like this one. Two to three months? Well, then we better get started. Okay. To start, you need to draw a picture on the cloth. Then you put a layer of cotton over the white space. This will add shape to the picture. After that, you can use gold or silver thread to sew over the cotton. Even though this takes a long time, if it's not done correctly, it won't look right. Now when you finish that, you outline the picture with black thread. Then, you put a little glue behind to make sure the threads don't come out. The last thing to do is put another piece of cloth on to cover up the glue and threads. Andrea, I don't think we're doing a very good job. Maybe we should just let Mr. Lin finish this piece of art. Come on, Campbell. We can't just give up. Come on, just keep trying. Okay. I guess we won't have time to get any lemon dohua then. Did you say lemon dohua? Limon dohua? That's my favorite. You know, Campbell, I think you're right. We should just let our teacher finish this for us. <laughs> That's right. Okay, everyone, we'll see you next time. On the go! Friends, welcome to Live with Campbell. Today we have a very special guest with us. You know her as Liz, but her real name is Marcy. Let's welcome our friend Marcy. <laughs> Hi Marcy, it's great to see you again. Now, Marcy, a lot of people don't know that we actually have you to thank for bringing our friend Andrea here to Taiwan. That's right. Andrea and I actually taught together for one year at a school outside of Guangzhou. Wow. 
Wow. About well, seven years ago. Seven years ago. Do you have any pictures from that time? I was just looking at some, and this is our dear Andrea. Oh, look at her. She looks about the same, I guess. <laughs> look at that hair. <laughs> wow, Andrea. <laughs> so tell us about that time. What was it like to teach in Guangzhou? It was a good experience, but sometimes difficult because I wasn't really good at teaching, I don't think. Uh -huh. And so I had trouble getting my students to listen to me and obey me. Mm. And just to communicate was hard. I see, I see. And did Andrea help you out at that time? That's right. Andrea is a great teacher. Mm. She always had good uh, advice for me and mm -hmm. good ideas. And so when I heard that there was an opening on Let's Talk in English uh -huh. for a teacher, I uh -huh. thought, Andrea, she's the perfect teacher. Oh, that's great. So why did you decide to go to Guangzhou in the first place? I was thinking at the time in college if I maybe wanted to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure, but this opportunity came up, and so I thought I would give it a try and see if I liked it. And did you like it? Well, the students really made me happy, mm -hmm. and I am glad that I was able to get to know them and invest my life in them for that year. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I really liked being in a classroom every day. Oh, was it, it was hard to be a teacher. That's right. I really learned how much work teachers have to do. Hmm. They have to prepare and they just have to think of so many things to make what they're teaching interesting. Hmm. It really made me respect teachers. Yeah, it's not easy to be a teacher. For sure. But now you're back here in Asia working with Studio Classroom. That's right. I think being over there in mainland China, um, it really helped me see that the world is much bigger mm. and that I could go to different places and try different things. So if I hadn't gone there, I probably wouldn't be here. Mm. Well, then we're glad that you actually went to Guangzhou and that you saw that the world is a lot bigger than just the United States. Mm -hmm. It's great to have you here, Marcy. All right, everyone. We hope you enjoyed learning more about Marcy. And you can come back next time to Live with Campbell to learn more about another one of your favorite teachers. We'll see you later. Love, love, peace. Well, Andrea, we have more presents to unwrap, so let's go. Oh, wait, Campbell. First, we should sing another Christmas carol. Oh, okay. Oh, but first, we should say goodbye. Oh, right. Well, friends, thanks for joining us here for Christmas Eve on Let's Talk in English. On PTS and the radio. And remember, remember learning English can be fun. Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. Do you know what today is? Sure. Today is Monday. Well, yes, it's Monday, but not just any Monday. It's the last Monday of 2005. That's right. It is. Wow. Sunday will be January 1st, 2006. A brand new year. That's right. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to Let's Talk in English on PTS and the radio. My name's Andrea. And I'm Campbell. Welcome to the last week of 2005. Today, we're going to learn how to talk about changes that new managers and owners bring to a business. Sounds fun. Hey, I have a question for you. How do you feel when things change? Well, it's not always easy to be happy when things change. But change can be a good thing. I agree. Well, things are going to be changing at the Net Cafe next year. Yes, Becca is moving to Atlanta, Aaron is going to college, and the Net Cafe will have a new manager. We'll meet him today. But before we do, here's today's mission. How many net cafes has Tyler managed? How many net cafes has Tyler managed? Tyler? Well, he must be the new manager at the net cafe. 
Let's go see Aaron and Becca at the Net Cafe in Conversation A. Becca, you've swept the floor three times. Sit down. I can't. I'm too nervous. The new manager won't be here for another hour. Well, he might be early. I want everything to look perfect. Everything does look perfect, but we don't have any customers. You're right. We need some. We want the cafe to look successful. Okay, I'll go find some customers. The new manager is coming, and Becca wants everything to look perfect. Aaron says everything does look perfect. There's only one problem: they don't have any customers. They need some customers, so Aaron goes to find them. I hope he finds some. Well, they want the cafe to look successful. I'm sure he'll find some customers. Well, Becca was sweeping the floor at the beginning of our conversation. All right, let's start by learning the key word you just heard: sweep. Sweep. When you sweep, you clean dirt and dust from the floor using a brush with a long handle. Now, this brush with a long handle is called a broom. B R O O M. You use a broom to sweep. Right. So when you're sweeping, you're cleaning dust and dirt off the floor by using a broom. If you don't sweep, your floor will probably be very dirty. Yes, but after you sweep, your floor will look nice and clean. Well, Becca has swept the floor three times. Aaron tells her to sit down. He wants her to stop sweeping. The manager won't be there for another hour. Well, she wants to make sure that the store looks perfect. She wants to make sure that the floor is clean. That's right. Let's learn our next keyword: successful. Successful. When you're successful, you're doing or getting what you wanted. When you're successful, you're doing well. When you're successful, you're doing well. A successful student is a student who does well in school. A successful business is a business that is making money. A business with lots of customers. Let's learn more about this conversation from Thomas. Here are your customers. They were talking to Amber. In- we're glad to help. I need to check my email anyway. And I can play computer games. Thanks, you two. Do you think the new manager will change anything? He might. He shouldn't change too much. You've done a good job managing the place. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, we like the Net Cafe just like it is. We do too. You've really done a great job, Becca. Aaron's right. The new manager shouldn't change too much because you've managed the Net Cafe very well. Yes, I agree with Nick. I like the Net Cafe just like it is. Me too. Okay, let's learn our key word from this conversation: change. Change. When you change something, this means that you make it different. You change it. Yes, when you change something, it's different. You make it different. We can say Derek asked his teacher if he can change seats. He can't see the board. Ken asked the salesperson if he could change his order. Kyle's job is changing next year. He will be doing a lot of new things. Well, you know, sometimes it's not easy when things change in our lives. That's right. Change isn't always easy, but life is about changes. That's what keeps things interesting. Well, Aaron says that the new manager of the Net Cafe shouldn't change too much. He says Becca's done a good job managing the place. 
Now here we see a sentence pattern. You've done a good job, verb plus ing, the noun. For example, you've done a good job planning the party. You've done a good job helping your mom. You've done a good job cleaning the room. Hey, Thomas, you've done a great job with teaching our students. That's true. Is Becca Harris here? That's me. I'm Tyler Adams, the new manager. It's nice to meet you. Please sit down. Aaron, will you get Tyler some coffee? Sure. So, what's your background? Have you managed a lot of net cafes? Uh, just one. I managed one in Oregon for two years. It's very successful now. Great. But it uh, wasn't successful when I started. It was um, kind of like this one. What? The net cafe is successful. Tyler just got there. I'm sure he'll see that it's successful soon. Our friends were all surprised when Tyler said that. Well, what's Tyler's background? Let's learn that keyword. Background. Background. Now your background talks about someone's family, school, or work experience. In our conversation, Becca asks Tyler, what's your background? She wants to know what kind of experience Tyler has had as a manager. She wants to know about his work background. Right, you can find out about someone's work background. You can also find out about their family background. Your family background talks about where your family is from. Right, for example, my family is from Asia. That's my family background. You can also talk about your school background. Your school background talks about the different schools that you studied at. We found the answer to today's mission in this conversation. How many net cafes has Tyler managed? How many net cafes has Tyler managed? Tyler has just managed one net cafe. Just one. That's our calendar phrase. Just one. Just one. So we found out a bit more about Tyler and his background and that he's managed just one net cafe. Let's learn more from Thomas. Keywords. All right, everyone, let's review today's keywords. Our first keyword is sweep. Sweep. Please sweep the floor. It's dirty. Successful. Successful. Karen's business is very successful. She has lots of customers. Change. Change. Marge changed her hair color. It's not brown anymore. It's red. Background. Background. Nancy's background is in sales. She's worked in six different companies. All right, let's review one more time. Sweep. Sweep. Successful. Successful. Change. Change. Background. Background. Thanks for saying those with us. Now let's go back to the Net Cafe to review today's conversations. Becca, you've swept the floor three times. Sit down. I can't. I'm too nervous. The new manager won't be here for another hour. Well, he might be early. I want everything to look perfect. Everything does look perfect. But we don't have any customers. You're right. We need some. We want the cafe to look successful. Okay, I'll go find some customers.
Here are your customers. They were talking to Amber in the stop and shop. We're glad to help. I need to check my email anyway. And I can play computer games. Thanks, you two. Do you think the new manager will change anything? He might. He shouldn't change too much. You've done a good job managing the place. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, we like the Net Cafe just like it is. Is Becca Harris here? That's me. I'm Tyler Adams, the new manager. It's nice to meet you. Please sit down. Aaron, will you get Tyler some coffee? Sure. So, what's your background? Have you managed a lot of net cafes?、Uh, just one. I managed one in Oregon for two years. It's very successful now. Great. But it、uh, wasn't successful when I started. It was、um, kind of like this one. Word power. It's time for word power. This week we're having a party to celebrate New Year's. We'll teach you words about a New Year's party. Please come. We have everything ready for the party. Everyone gets a noisemaker. 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 It makes fun noises. What is that? Oh, don't shoot me! It's silly string. Silly string. Silly string. Isn't it silly? Here, wear a party hat. Everyone should wear a party hat. You wear a party hat at parties. Party hat. Party hat. Oh, it's our friends! Come in. Make yourself at home. Here's a party hat. I'm glad we can spend New Year's together. It's almost midnight. Ten, nine, eight. That's the countdown. 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 Happy New Year! Woohoo! Now it's time to say cheers. Cheers. Happy New Year, everyone. Calendar phrase. Just one. Just one. 一块就好 Honey, would you like a cookie? Sure, just one. How about a piece of cake? I guess just one piece. Oh, this candy is so good. All right, I'll try just one. Honey, you don't look very good. I ate too much. I should have had just one. Just one. Just one. 一块就好 Just one more thing to do. Practice our question of the day. What do you do when you're nervous? Well, I try to breathe and I try to calm myself down. Sometimes I'll talk to my friends and they'll help to calm me down.、Mm, yes, it's always a good idea to talk to someone when you're nervous. Students, practice this question. We'll see you next time on Let's Talk in English on PTS and the radio. And remember, learning English can be fun. Bye. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Let's Talk in English on PTS and the radio. My name is Campbell, and I'm Andrea. We're glad you joined us for today's lesson. Oh, Andrea, I just thought of something. Since this is the last week of 2005, that means it's the last week of our Florida story, and that means we have to say goodbye to our friends, and that's sad. Well, Campbell, it is sad, but our friends are starting new adventures. Liz and Greg are moving to Brazil. Aaron is going to college. 
Becca is moving to Atlanta, and Jeff and Mia are having a baby. It's exciting. Yes, but but we still have to say goodbye. Yes, we do. But you know what? Next year we'll have new friends to meet, and that's exciting too. That's true. I guess this is when I need to learn how to be okay with all these things that are changing. Well, you know, our friends Aaron and Becca are learning about that too. Yesterday they met Tyler, the new manager of the Net Cafe. Yes, and I think Tyler might want to change a few things at the Net Cafe. We'll hear a little bit more about that today. We will. But first, here is today's mission. What time does Tyler think the Net Cafe should open? What time does Tyler think the Net Cafe should open? Hmm. I wonder if that's one of the things he wants to change. Well, maybe. Let's find out. Here is conversation A. Well, it's early. We'll have more customers later. The net cafe I managed was busy all the time. Once I change a few things, this one will be busy too. You're going to change some things? Of course. I'm going to introduce some new products. Oh. Like what? Tea drinks. You only sell coffee and hot chocolate. Well, most of our customers are teens. They don't like tea. Tyler is going to change things at the Net Cafe. He said that the Net Cafe he manages is busy all the time. There are customers there all the time. He thinks after he changes a few things. Becca's net cafe will be busy too. Do you think that's true? Well, I guess we won't find out until after he starts making some changes. So, what does he want to change? Well, one thing Tyler is going to do is introduce some new products. All right, we heard two of our key words in that sentence. Let's learn the first one. The first key word is introduce. Introduce. When you introduce something to a store, this means you bring it into the store and sell it for the first time. Yes, when you introduce something, you sell it for the first time. Many businesses introduce things by using commercials. We can say the restaurant introduced a new special last week: lemon salmon. The company introduced their new car. Many people were interested in learning more about it. Now, this is to introduce something. Now, what does it mean to introduce someone? Well, if you introduce someone to another person, you tell the other person your friend's name and a little bit about them. For example, this is my friend Campbell. He's an English teacher. He lives in Taipei. I just introduced Campbell. That's right. Okay, now let's learn our next key word: product. Product. A product is something that people sell. For example, in a music store, their products might be CDs, CD players, DVDs, MP3 players, and other things like that. Some of the products at the Net Cafe are coffee, hot chocolate, and muffins. Mmm, muffins. <laughs> All right, let's learn some more about this conversation from Shin Thomas. We'll see. Tea is a big seller in Oregon. This isn't Oregon. What did you say? Nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. This is my brother Aaron. He takes care of all the computers. But I won't be here next year. I'm going away to college. That's okay. I'll hire a professional to take care of the computers. Aaron does a very good job. <laughs> I'm sure he does. Aaron does a very good job. He takes care of all the computers at the Net Cafe, but he won't be at the Net Cafe next year. Well, it sounds like Tyler wants to make a lot of changes. 
Do you think tea will be a big seller? Well, I'm not sure. Let's start by learning our keyword: seller. Seller. A seller is a product that is popular or not popular with customers. Right, a seller. Now, a big seller is a product that a lot of people buy. Right. Now we find out in our conversation that tea is a big seller in Oregon. That means that many people bought tea from the Net Cafe in Oregon. But will it be a big seller in Florida? Well, we're not sure yet. Right, we're not sure if a lot of people will want to buy tea drinks in Florida. Now you might also hear the word best seller. Now the best seller is a product that people buy more than others. Right. Sometimes when we're talking about books, you might hear this word "best seller." A book that's a best seller is a book that a lot of people buy. Well, Tyler says that he's going to hire a professional to take care of the computers next year. Our keyword here is professional. Professional. A professional is someone who works at a job and has special training. When you're a professional, you have lots of experience and studied a lot to get your job. Now, our friend Aaron isn't a professional. He didn't go to school to learn how to take care of computers, but I think he still does a wonderful job. I think so too. Let's learn more about this conversation from Tom. Do you want to talk about the cafe's schedule now?、Mm, not now. I'm on my way to a real estate agency to see about apartments. Tomorrow, then? Yes. What time do you open? 8 a.m. <laughs> That's too late. You should be open by 6 a.m. Well, you can change the cafe hours. <laughs> I will. Well, I have to go. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Bye. Six a.m. That's really early. Do you think opening the store that early will really improve business? Well, I'm not sure, but I do know that we found the answer to today's mission. We did. The question is, what time does Tyler think the Net Cafe should open? What time does Tyler think the Net Cafe should open? He thinks the Net Cafe should open at 6 a.m. Yeah, and that would change the schedule of the Net Cafe. Let's learn this keyword: schedule. Schedule. A schedule is a list of things to do and when they're going to be done. Yes, a schedule, a list of things to do and when you're going to do it. You might have a schedule for school or a work schedule. Right now, for example, the Net Cafe schedule might look something like this. Becca will get to the store and get things ready at 7:30. Then the store will open at 8 o'clock. And at twelve o'clock, Aaron will come in to help. At one o'clock, Becca has lunch. At five o'clock, Becca leaves. What's the next thing on the schedule? Well, maybe Aaron closes the store at nine thirty. Then he cleans up and leaves the store at ten thirty. Right. So, what time does the Net Cafe open now? Well, the Net Cafe opens at eight a.m. Tyler says that's too late, and that's our calendar phrase. That's too late. That's too late. All right. Well, it's not too late for us to learn some more because Thomas is here to teach us some more in Chinese. Key words. All right, friends. Let's review our keywords from today's lesson. Our first keyword is introduce. Introduce. Can you introduce your friend to me? I haven't met her yet. Product. Product. Do you like this new cleaning product? I think it's great. Seller. 
seller. Hamburgers are the biggest seller in this restaurant. Professional. Professional. Tom is a professional. He has fixed cars for many years. Schedule. Schedule. Can we get together at noon tomorrow? What's your schedule? Now let's review them again. Introduce. Introduce. Product. Product. Seller. Seller. Professional. Professional. Schedule. Schedule. Hey, great job! Now, what's next on our schedule? Oh, well, we're going to review what happened in today's conversations. Well, it's early. We'll have more customers later. The net cafe I managed was busy all the time. Once I change a few things, this one will be busy too. You're going to change some things? Of course. I'm going to introduce some new products. Oh, like what? Tea drinks. You only sell coffee and hot chocolate. Well, most of our customers are teens. They don't like tea. We'll see. Tea is a big seller in Oregon. This isn't Oregon. What did you say? Nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. This is my brother Aaron. He takes care of all the computers. But I won't be here next year. I'm going away to college. That's okay. I'll hire a professional to take care of the computers. Aaron does a very good job. <laughs> I'm sure he does. Do you want to talk about the cafe's schedule now? Mm, not now. I'm on my way to a real estate agency to see about apartments. Tomorrow then? Yes. What time do you open? 8 a.m. <laughs> That's too late. You should be open by 6 a.m. Well, you can change the cafe hours. <laughs> I will. Well, I have to go. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Bye. Two-word verbs. Okay. I'll be back in about an hour. Where are you going? I'm going to see about a car. A car? Are you thinking about buying a car? Maybe. I'm going to see about it. Okay. See to it that you look at the car carefully. I will. And see to it that you check everything on the car. And see to it that. Okay, Becca. Why don't you just come with me? That way, you can see to it that I ask all the right questions. Good idea. That's too late. That's too late. 太晚了 Let's leave for the movie at 6 p.m. That's too late. Okay, then we'll leave at 5:30 p.m. Sorry, but that's too late. Well, how about 5 p.m.? Nope, that's too late. Why? Because the movie starts at 4:30. That's too late. That's too late. 太晚了 You want to practice some more? Well, it's not too late. We still have one more thing to practice. Our question of the day: Which do you like better, coffee or tea? Why? Well, I like coffee and tea, but I like tea better. There's so many different kinds of tea to try. Yeah, I like tea better too. I think it tastes better. What about you? Practice this question, and we'll see you tomorrow right here on Let's Talk in English on PTS and the radio. Hey, and remember, learning English can be fun. Bye. Bye. To say goodbye, I don't want to see you go. 
Though it's hard for us to say goodbye, we hope that you succeed in all you do. We just want to say, God bless you. Campbell, that was beautiful. Did you really write that song? Yes, I wrote it because I wanted to say goodbye in a special way to our friends. Well, that was very special. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Let's Talk in English on PTS and the radio. My name's Andrea. And I'm Campbell. Today is the last day of our lesson, The New Manager. Yesterday, we heard a lot about the things that Tyler wants to change at the Net Cafe. Today, Becca will tell Liz about the new manager and the things he wants to change. And we're going to learn some more things that will help us talk about changes that new managers and owners bring to business. Yes, things like give someone a chance and what it means to succeed. Well, before we learn those things, here's today's mission. What is Tyler going to do at the Net Cafe? What is Tyler going to do at the Net Cafe? Well, listen for that answer. Let's start our day with Conversation A. If he's the manager, I'm not coming here anymore. If he treats customers like that, he won't succeed here. Well... Let's give him a chance. It won't be fun spending the next few days with him. That's for sure. Well, I'm going to see Liz. You know, Aaron's right. If the new manager Tyler treats customers like that, he won't succeed at the Net Cafe. That's true. Now, what does it mean to succeed? Well, listen as we teach you this key word. Succeed. Succeed. When you succeed, you get what you wanted to get. When you succeed, you are successful. You do really well. For example, if you want a new car, you save up a little bit of money every month, and if you have enough to buy a new car, you succeeded. Right. Another example is as a student, if you succeed, you might graduate from school. That's what you want to do, right? You want to graduate. When you graduate, you succeed. So students, keep working hard with English. We know that all of you will succeed. Well, Claire says they should give Tyler a chance. Now it's your chance to learn this keyword. Chance. Chance. A chance is a time to do something. Giving Tyler a chance means giving him time to be a good manager. Right. When someone has a chance to do something, they have time to do it. For example, we might say, Tim has a chance to go to Hawaii this summer. He has time. He has an opportunity to go to Hawaii. And our calendar phrase here is, that's for sure. That's for sure. Thank you, students. Let's learn more from Thomas. What's wrong, Becca? I met the new manager of the Net Cafe. And you don't like him? No. He's going to change a lot of things. He thinks I'm a bad manager. He said that? No, but I know that's what he thought. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll be in Atlanta. And we'll be in Brazil. So you sold the stop and shop? Yes. I haven't met the new owner yet. His name is Tyler Adams. Tyler Adams? Isn't he the new manager of the Net Cafe? Yes, he is. You mean he's going to be the manager of the Net Cafe and the owner of the Stop and Shop? That's right. Whoa. Wait. Becca doesn't like Tyler. 
He's going to be making a lot of changes at the Net Cafe. Hey, that's the answer to today's mission. What is Tyler going to do at the Net Cafe? What is Tyler going to do at the Net Cafe? He's going to change a lot of things. Becca's not happy about that, but she says it doesn't matter. She'll be in Atlanta. Let's learn this keyword: matter. Matter. If something matters, then it's important. If something matters, it's something you care about. Yes, when something matters, it means a lot to you. You can say, "My family matters to me." Or doing well in school matters to me. Well, Becca says it doesn't matter. She means it's not important. She won't be here. She'll be in Atlanta. And Liz and Greg will be in Brazil. They sold the Stop and Shop to Tyler Adams. He's the new owner. And owner is our next keyword. Owner. Owner. If you are the owner of something. That means that it's yours. It belongs to you. Right. When you're the owner of something, it's yours. For example, I'm the owner of this shirt. This is my shirt. Well, Tyler is the new owner of the Stop and Shop. That's his store. All right, friends. Let's learn some more from Tom. Tom. Tyler is the new manager of the Net Cafe. Really? He gave us an offer of forty-five thousand dollars, and we took it. I'm sorry you don't like him. I don't want him managing my store. It's not your store anymore, Becca. But what about my customers? What if he treats them badly? Maybe Tyler was just having a bad day. Maybe. Don't be sad. Worrying won't help. You're right. My customers will be okay. Atlanta, here I come. <laughs> wow, Atlanta, get ready for Becca. I'm so thankful that Becca has the chance to work at the Net Cafe headquarters in Atlanta. Yes, but we see that she's really thinking about her customers. She doesn't want the new manager of the Net Cafe to treat them badly. Liz is right. Worrying won't help. Well, I can't believe that Tyler bought the Stop and Shop. He gave Liz and Greg an offer that they took. That's right. He gave them an offer. Let's learn this key word. Offer. Offer. When you give someone an offer. That means you'll give them something if they want it. Right. You might have heard of a job offer. A job offer is when a business is saying, "We will give you a job if you want it." Well, Tyler gave Liz an offer of forty-five thousand dollars. That means he said he would pay forty-five thousand dollars if they want to sell the Stop and Shop to him. So he gave an offer to buy the Stop and Shop. Well, we see that Becca's worried about Tyler being the new manager of the Net Cafe. She's worried about how he's going to treat the customers. Well, Liz says maybe Tyler was just having a bad day. Here we see a sentence pattern. Maybe person was just having a bad day. Now remember, when someone's having a bad day, that just means that everything is going wrong, and maybe they're not very happy. Yeah. Well, we hope you're not having a bad day. We hope that things are going well for you. All right. Let's learn more from Thomas. Key words. Hey, students! This is your chance to practice today's key words. So please say them along with us. Our first key word is succeed. Succeed. Linda is very good with money. She'll succeed in business. Chance. Chance. 
I have a chance to go to Paris. Should I go? Matter. Matter. It doesn't matter if you're late. We won't start on time. Owner. Owner. The owner of that house wants to sell it. Offer. Offer. Ben got a job offer from a big company. I think he'll take it. Okay, let's review one more time. Succeed. Succeed. Chance. Chance. Matter. Matter. Owner. Owner. Offer. Offer. Thanks, everyone. Now you have a chance to listen to them again in today's conversations. If he's the manager, I'm not coming here anymore. If he treats customers like that, he won't succeed here. Well, let's give him a chance. It won't be fun spending the next few days with him. That's for sure. Well, I'm going to see Liz. What's wrong, Becca? I met the new manager of the Net Cafe. And, and you don't like him? No. He's going to change a lot of things. He thinks I'm a bad manager. He said that? No, but I know that's what he thought. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll be in Atlanta. And we'll be in Brazil. So you sold the Stop and Shop? Yes. I haven't met the new owner yet. His name is Tyler Adams. Tyler is the new manager of the Net Cafe. Really? He gave us an offer of $45,000 and we took it. I'm sorry you don't like him. I don't want him managing my store. It's not your store anymore, Becca. But what about my customers? What if he treats them badly? Maybe Tyler was just having a bad day. Maybe. Don't be sad. Worrying won't help. You're right. My customers will be okay. Atlanta, here I come. Calendar phrase. That's for sure. That's for sure. 想也知道 Your English test is going to be hard, Tommy. That's for sure. You'll have to study a lot. That's for sure. If you don't pass the test, you'll fail the class. That's for sure. So why aren't you studying? Because I'm lazy. That's for sure. That's for sure. That's for sure. 想也知道 Here's our Q O D. Practice it with us. How should businesses treat customers? Well, businesses should be nice to their customers. They should help them in whatever way they can. They should make their customers' lives easier. That's true. And when you treat your customers well, your business will be successful. Thanks for joining us on Let's Talk in English on PTS and the radio. And remember, learning English can be fun. Bye. Bye. I can't believe another year is almost over. I know. Soon we have to say goodbye to 2005. But now it's time to say hello, students. Welcome to Let's Talk in English on PTS and the radio. My name's Andrea, and I'm Campbell. Hey, Andrea, have you thought of any of your New Year's resolutions? 新年希望 Oh right! It's time to do that again. Hmm. I'm going to have to think about that. 
Okay, well, students, what about you? Have you thought of your New Year's resolutions? Is there anything you want to change for 2006? It's always good to look at the future and think about what you want to do. Oh, Campbell, I know one. I want to wake up earlier. I love mornings, and there's so much that I want to do. But I guess that if I want to wake up earlier, I also have to go to bed earlier. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Well, for me, I want to work on my talents. I want to be a better singer, actor, and dancer. That's great, Campbell. Well, today we're going to see our friends in Florida at their New Year's Eve party. I love parties, and you're going to learn words that will help you talk about the future. You'll learn words like the future. That's one of our key words. Now here's today's mission. What is Rita good at? What is Rita good at? Well, speaking of the future and things that are ahead, we should get our lesson started. That's right. Here is Conversation A. Girls. Oh, what a great song. Great job, guys. What a perfect song to sing at the end of a year. Yes, I really like the part that said, I won't look to the future. I won't look to the past. Today is what we've got. So let's enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah, that's my favorite part, too. And we heard two key words in that part. Let's learn them. Our first key word is future. Future. The future is any time after now. Anything that has not happened yet is in the future. That's right. Tomorrow, a week from now, a year from now, all of these things are in the future. Yes. Now, sometimes you might hear the question, what do you want to be in the future? What do you want to be in the future? What they're asking is, what kind of job do you want to have when you are older? Yeah, what do you want to be in the future? Right. Okay, now let's learn our next key word, past. Past. The past is the time before now. Anything that happened already is part of the past. Yes, the past. Yesterday, the day before yesterday, all of these things are in the past. Now we've talked about history. History is the story of things that happened in the past. Yes, things that happened before today. Now we've talked about the future and the past. Now what about now? What is now called? Now is called the present. We've got the present, the past, and the future. All right, friends, let's learn some more from Thomas. Hey, you guys sound really good. I'm just glad I can play with the band one last time. Oh, that's right. This will be the last time you play with the band. Well, you never know. Maybe Aaron will get to play with us again someday. I hope so. You guys are really good. You are. Thanks for helping us out, Rita. It's too bad Jason couldn't be here. But you're good at playing the drums. <laughs> Jeff's right. The band sounds really good. Aaron's glad he can play in the band one last time. Claire says maybe Aaron will get to play with them again someday. Someday? Well, when is that? Let's learn our keyword. Someday. Someday. You use the word someday to talk about a time in the future. 
Right. Someday, a time in the future when you're not really sure when, you might say someday. Right. When you use someday, you don't know when in the future. You know that it will be sometime, and it might be a long time away. Right. Someday, you might say, "I hope I can go to Paris someday." You can say, "Ian hopes to get married someday." Right. So Ian wants to get married. He doesn't know when. Just someday. Well, someday Aaron will get to play with the band again. We hope you do, Aaron. We also see our calendar phrase here. You never know. You never know. Now, when you think that something could happen in the future, you can say, "You never know." You never know when it might rain. You better bring an umbrella. That's right. We also found the answer to today's mission. What is Rita good at? What is Rita good at? Rita is good at playing the drums. That's right. She's good at playing the drums. Hey, Campbell, can you play the drums? <laughs> no, I can't play the drums. Okay, well maybe you can learn or just practice with me. Put up, put. Pa pa. Boom. Okay. Keep practicing, and let's learn more from Thomas. <laughs> so, Rita, did you have a good time in Paris? Oh yes, we had a great time. We have wonderful memories. That's good to hear. We really stayed busy. I think we saw all the sights. What was your favorite thing in Paris? We saw the Eiffel Tower and a lot of famous places, but my favorite thing was spending time with Amber and Mike. That's right. That's right. Oh, Rita's favorite thing in Paris was spending time with Amber and Mike. You know she's right. The time you have with your family and the people you love is very special. It is. Well, in our conversation, our friends are talking about Amber and Rita's trip to Paris. Rita says they had a great time and they have wonderful memories. All right. Now let's learn this key word: memory. Memory. A memory is something that you remember from the past about a person, a place, or something you did. Yes, a memory is something you think about from the past. One of my favorite memories from this year is when Jeff and Mia came to visit us in Taipei. Well, Rita said they have wonderful memories. There are a lot of wonderful things that they will remember about their trip to Paris. Yes, usually when you go on a trip, you come home with many memories. Rita says they stayed really busy. She means they did a lot of things. They saw all the sights. Yes, the sights. Now let's learn that keyword. Sight. Sight. A site is an interesting place to visit. Yes, a site. When you're on a trip, you might visit some attractions. Those are places to visit. They're called sites. In Taipei, a famous site is the Taipei 101. Another famous site is the Night Market, Yuesu. All of these are interesting places to visit in Taipei. Now, one of the most famous sights in Paris is the Eiffel Tower, and Rita and Amber saw that. Right. When you think of France, when you think of Paris, a lot of people think of the Eiffel Tower. All right. Let's learn some more from Thomas. Key words. All right. Let's practice our key words for today. Our first word is future. Future. In the future, I hope to get married and have children. Past. Past. Don't worry about that anymore. It's in the past. Someday. Someday. Ben hopes he can go to Canada someday. Memory. Memory. I have wonderful memories of my trip to Japan last year. Sight. Sight. 
We spent three days in Shanghai. We shopped and saw the sights. Hey, let's say them together again. Future. Future. Past. Past. Someday. Someday. Memory. Memory. Sight. Sight. All right, friends. Great job. Now let's review what happened in today's conversations. Sound really good. I'm just glad I can play with the band one last time. Oh, that's right. This will be the last time you play with the band. Well, you never know. Maybe Aaron will get to play with us again someday. I hope so. You guys are really good. You are. Thanks for helping us out, Rita. It's too bad Jason couldn't be here, but you're good at playing the drums. So Rita, did you have a good time in Paris? Oh yes, we had a great time. We have wonderful memories. That's good to hear. We really stayed busy. I think we saw all the sights. What was your favorite thing in Paris? We saw the Eiffel Tower and a lot of famous places, but my favorite thing was spending time with Amber and Mike. Movie minute. Hi everyone. Are you excited about 2006? I am. I've made some New Year's resolutions. A New Year's resolution is something you want to change in the new year. We all have New Year's resolutions. How, How about, about you? you? I'm so excited about my trip to Paris this month, and my New Year's resolution is to travel even more with my family next year. Who knows? I may even travel to Taipei. Hi everyone, we're going to miss you next year. That's right, we're going to be in Brazil. So our New Year's resolution is to learn how to speak Portuguese. Portuguese. I will be in Atlanta next year. My New Year's hope is to make a lot of new friends there. And. Hey everyone, I'll be in college in 2006. My New Year's hope is that I make good grades and make my own music CD. Hi, for 2006, my New Year resolution is to become more healthy. So I'm gonna exercise at least four times a week. Wish me luck. My New Year's resolution is to tell my mom I love her every day. Cool. I want to tell my mom I love her every day too. Hey, hey mom, mom, I, I love, love you. you. We've enjoyed getting to know you over the last two years. That's right, and we're really excited about our new baby. Our New Year's hope is to be good parents and buy a new house. If you're ever in Florida, come by and visit us. Happy New Year! Happy, Happy New, New Year! Year. You never know. You never know. 很难说 Billy, I think you'll be a teacher someday. 
Well, you never know. Maybe I will. But you'd also make a good businessman. You never know. I like to sell things. Of course, you could also be a musician. Hey, you never know. Maybe I'll try that. So, what do you want to be when you finish school? A TV star. A TV star? Yeah, you never know. I may become famous. You never know. You never know. 很难说 Do you know what time it is? That's right. It's time to practice our question of the day. What is one thing you hope to do in the future? Well, one thing I hope to do in the future is travel around the world. Hey, me too. I would love to travel. What about you? What would you like to do in the future? Practice this question, and we'll see you next time on Let's Talk. On PTS and the radio. And remember, learning English can be fun. Bye. Learning English can be fun. Let's talk in English. Learning to get along can be fun. I can't believe there are only two more days in 2005. Yeah, two more days. We have to make them great days. Hey. We should make some special memories. Oh, you're right, Campbell. We should have a celebration. Great idea! Hi, everyone. Welcome to Let's Talk in English on PTS and the radio. I'm Campbell, and I'm Andrea. We're so glad you joined us today. Yeah, you know what? In two days, it will be 2006, a brand new year, and we're going to have some changes in our new show. That's right. You'll see new stories and meet new friends. Yeah, well, friends, we've had a great time teaching you over the past two years, and we're proud of you for working so hard.、Mm, yes, we've had a wonderful two years together, and there's more to come next year. We're excited about it. Today, we're going to keep learning how to talk about the future. Okay, students. Here's today's mission. Why does Nick wish he could go to Brazil? Why does Nick wish he could go to Brazil? So, Campbell, are you ready for today? Yes, I am. Let's start our day with conversation A. So, are you guys ready to go to Brazil? Yes, I think we're finally ready. We've been planning for more than a month. I wish I could go. Really? Why? I've heard Brazilian girls are the most beautiful girls in the world. That's not true. It isn't. It can't be. Liz is the most beautiful woman in the world. And I'm not Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Liz is not Brazilian. Something that comes from Brazil is Brazilian. Yeah, you can have Brazilian food, Brazilian music, Brazilian movies. Well, Nick has heard that Brazilian girls are the most beautiful girls in the world. Greg is so sweet when he says it can't be. Liz is the most beautiful woman in the world, and she's not Brazilian. Very cute. <laughs> well, looks like Greg and Liz are finally ready to go. They've been planning for more than a month. Let's learn our keyword here. Our keyword is finally. Finally. You say finally when something happens after a long time. All、right. When something happens after a long time, you can say that it finally. Happened. We can say Jonah finally gave Emily her Christmas present. Christmas was a week ago. Tom finally went to the doctor. His back was really sore. Well, Liz and Greg are finally ready to go to Brazil. They've been planning for more than a month. Our keyword here is plan. Plan. When you plan, you think about something you want to do, and then you decide to do it. Right now, you might plan a trip, or you might plan a party, plan a vacation—all different things that you can plan. 
We also found the answer to today's mission here. Why does Nick wish he could go to Brazil? Why does Nick wish he could go to Brazil? Nick wishes he can go to Brazil because he's heard Brazilian girls are the most beautiful girls in the world. Right. So Nick, maybe you can go and visit Greg and Liz. <laughs> Let's learn more from Thomas. Hey, sis. I'm going to miss you next year. I'll miss you too, Aaron. I just realized something. Many of us will be living somewhere else next year. That's right. Goodbye, Tampa. Well, I'll still be here, and you four have to visit. Okay? Sure. Hey, Becca. Is it almost midnight? Yes, it's eleven fifty-five. Only five more minutes till the new year. How about one more song to end two thousand and five? Let's do it. Yes, that's a great idea. They're going to sing one last song before the new year begins. It's eleven fifty-five. Only five minutes until the new year. Now that's exciting. Yes, there are going to be a lot of exciting new changes next year. Four of our friends will be living somewhere else next year. They're going to start new adventures. Yes, but that's in the future. For now, let's learn our keyword. Our keyword is realize. Realize. When you realize something, this means you know and understand something that you didn't know or understand before. When you realize something, you know or you understand it. Something that you didn't realize before. You can say, "I just realized it's Jason's birthday tomorrow, and I forgot to buy him a present." I just realized that today is Friday. I have an appointment. Liz just realized that many of them will be living somewhere else next year. All right, let's learn our next keyword: midnight. Midnight. Midnight is twelve o'clock at night. At midnight, a new day begins. That's right. Midnight is twelve o'clock a.m. We can say Alex is tired today. He didn't go to bed until midnight last night. Yeah, Kim got home at midnight. Her parents were a little angry. At midnight on December thirty-first, a new year begins. Right now in our conversation, it's eleven fifty-five. Five more minutes until midnight. Five more minutes until the new year. All right. Before we go back to our friends in Florida, let's learn some more from Thomas. Like that song. It's been a good year. We've had some fun times. Now we're saying goodbye to 2005. Claire sings. It's time for a New Year's celebration. She just sang one of our keywords: celebration. Celebration. A celebration is a time when you have a party. Because you have a special reason to be happy, right? A celebration. It's a party. It's a time when you're happy about something. If something great happens, you might want to have a celebration. 
Now, a New Year's celebration is a time when family and friends get together to celebrate the year that just finished and the new year in the future. We can say Albert just graduated from college. His friends and family are having a celebration for him. Annie had a big celebration for her 30th birthday. When was the last time you went to a celebration? What was it a celebration for? Well, I just love celebrations. You know, our friends are having a very special New Year's celebration. What a great way to start the new year, singing together and having a countdown. Now, a countdown is when you count down to the new year. Five, four, three, two, one, happy new year. That's a countdown. Yeah, hey, maybe this year you can do the countdown in English. We also have our calendar phrase here one more time. One more time. Now you say this when you want someone to say something again. Let's learn more from Thomas. Key words. Hey everyone, it's finally time to practice our key words. So say them with us. Our first key word is finally. Finally. I've wanted an MP3 player for a long time. I finally bought one. Plan. Plan. When do you plan to visit your brother? Realize. Realize. Claire never realized how much Aaron liked her. Midnight. Midnight. When you said 12 o'clock, did you mean midnight or noon? Celebration. Celebration. We had a big celebration for Dad's 75th birthday. Okay, let's repeat these one more time. Finally. Finally. Plan. Plan. Realize. Realize. Midnight. Midnight. Celebration. Celebration. Well, friends, those were our last five key words for 2005. Now let's listen for them again as we review today's conversations. So are you guys ready to go to Brazil? Yes, I think we're finally ready. We've been planning for more than a month. I wish I could go. Really? Why? I've heard Brazilian girls are the most beautiful girls in the world. That's not true. It isn't. It can't be. Liz is the most beautiful woman in the world. And I'm not Brazilian. <laughs> hey sis, I'm going to miss you next year. I'll miss you too, Aaron. I just realized something. Many of us will be living somewhere else next year. That's right. Goodbye, Tampa. Well, I'll still be here, and you four have to visit, okay? Sure. Hey, Becca, is it almost midnight? Yes, it's 11.55. Only five more minutes till the new year. How about one more song to end 2005? Let's do it. It's been a good year. We had some fun times. Now we're saying goodbye to 2005. It's time for a new year celebration. Everyone sing. Happy, happy new year. Happy, happy new year. I didn't hear you one more time. Happy, happy new year. You've done a good job. The You've done a good job cleaning the house. You've done a good job writing the letter. 
You've done a good job shooting the ball. You're good at playing the. You're good at playing the. You're good at playing the drums. You're good at playing the guitar. You're good at playing the trumpet. I'm going to miss. I'm going to miss. I'm going to miss Chinese food. I'm going to miss my mom and dad. I'm going to miss my friends. Calendar phrase. One more time. One more time. 再一次 Let's watch the movie again. One more time. But we've already watched it twice tonight. Oh come on! Just one more time. Honey, it's late. I'm tired. But it's my favorite movie. Let's watch it one more time. Okay, okay. But only if you make more popcorn. Okay, I can do that one more time. One more time. One more time. 再一次 We have one more thing to do. Practice our question of the day. What was the last celebration you went to? How was it? We just went to a Christmas celebration last week. It was a lot of fun. All of our friends were together. We sang a lot of Christmas carols, and we gave each other presents. It was great. Yes, it was great. Students, thanks for joining us today here on Let's Talk in English on PTS and the radio. And remember, learning English can be fun. Bye. Bye. English can be fun. Let's talk in English. Happy, happy New Year! Let's celebrate. Everybody, give a cheer! Oh, I just can't wait. <laughs> Hi, everyone! Welcome to Saturday here on Let's Talk in English on PTS and the radio. My name is Campbell, and I'm Andrea. Today is New Year's Eve. It's the last day of the year. Can you believe it? There's only one day left in this amazing year. Now the past two years have been an adventure. We've had a lot of fun with our friends in Florida, and we've learned a lot from their lives. Yes, we did. Let's take a look at some fun memories from the past two years. <laughs> I have something to tell you, Andrea. I already know. Hi, Andrea Bunny. What are you doing? Wow, we really did have a lot of fun. Well, Campbell, we've been teaching together for two years. Two years—that's over six hundred shows. Andrea, that's over three hundred hours. Do you remember when my parents came to visit us? Oh yes, and my parents came too. We've had a lot of visitors, like Doctor Computer and Jeff and Mia, and Super Favor Man. <laughs> yeah, let's take a look at some fun teaching memories. Don't you know? Spring is here. <gasps> Spring is here. Oh, I can't believe. Hi everyone! Welcome to Let's Talk in English. Ta-da! Hi everyone! You see, teaching English can be fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends. Let's review what happened in the last week of our Florida story. Here we go. Becca, you've swept the floor three times. Sit down. I can't. I'm too nervous. The new manager won't be here for another hour. Well, he might be early. I want everything to look perfect. Everything does look perfect. 
But we don't have any customers. You're right. We need some. We want the cafe to look successful. Okay, I'll go find some customers. Here are your customers. They were talking to Amber in the Stop and Shop. We're glad to help. I need to check my email anyway. And I can play computer games. Thanks, you two. Do you think the new manager will change anything? He might. He shouldn't change too much. You've done a good job managing the place. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, we like the Net Cafe just like it is. Is Becca Harris here? That's me. I'm Tyler Adams, the new manager. It's nice to meet you. Please sit down. Aaron, will you get Tyler some coffee? Sure. So, what's your background? Have you managed a lot of net cafes? Uh, just one. I managed one in Oregon for two years. It's very successful now. Great. But it uh, wasn't successful when I started. It was um, kind of like this one. Well, it's early. We'll have more customers later. The net cafe I managed was busy all the time. Once I change a few things, this one will be busy too. You're going to change some things? Of course. I'm going to introduce some new products. Oh. Like what? Tea drinks. You only sell coffee and hot chocolate. Well, most of our customers are teens. They don't like tea. We'll see. Tea is a big seller in Oregon. This isn't Oregon. What did you say? Nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. This is my brother, Aaron. He takes care of all the computers. But I won't be here next year. I'm going away to college. That's okay. I'll hire a professional to take care of the computers. Aaron does a very good job. <laughs> I'm sure he does. Do you want to talk about the cafe's schedule now? Mm, not now. I'm on my way to a real estate agency to see about apartments. Tomorrow then? Yes. What time do you open? 8 a.m. <laughs> That's too late. You should be open by 6 a.m. Well, you can change the cafe hours. <laughs> I will. Well, I have to go. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Bye. If he's the manager, I'm not coming here anymore. If he treats customers like that, he won't succeed here. Well... Let's give him a chance. It won't be fun spending the next few days with him. That's for sure. Well, I'm going to see Liz. What's wrong, Becca? I met the new manager of the Net Cafe. And you don't like him? No. He's going to change a lot of things. He thinks I'm a bad manager. He said that? No, but I know that's what he thought. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll be in Atlanta. And we'll be in Brazil. So you sold the stop and shop? Yes. I haven't met the new owner yet. His name is Tyler Adams. Tyler is the new manager of the Net Cafe. Really? He gave us an offer of $45,000 and we took it. I'm sorry you don't like him. I don't want him managing my store. It's not your store anymore, Becca. But what about my customers? What if he treats them badly? Maybe Tyler was just having a bad day. Maybe. Don't be sad. Worrying won't help. You're right. 
my customers will be okay. Atlanta, here I come. <laughs> Girls, hey, you guys sound really good. I'm just glad I can play with the band one last time. Oh, that's right. This will be the last time you play with the band. Well, you never know. Maybe Aaron will get to play with us again someday. I hope so. You guys are really good. You are. Thanks for helping us out, Rita. It's too bad Jason couldn't be here. But you're good at playing the drums. So, Rita, did you have a good time in Paris? Oh yes, we had a great time. We have wonderful memories. That's good to hear. We really stayed busy. I think we saw all the sights. What was your favorite thing in Paris? We saw the Eiffel Tower and a lot of famous places, but my favorite thing was spending time with Amber and Mike. So, are you guys ready to go to Brazil? Yes, I think we're finally ready. We've been planning for more than a month. I wish I could go. Really? Why? I've heard Brazilian girls are the most beautiful girls in the world. That's not true. It isn't. It can't be. Liz is the most beautiful woman in the world. And I'm not Brazilian. <laughs> hey, sis. I'm going to miss you next year. I'll miss you too, Aaron. I just realized something. Many of us will be living somewhere else next year. That's right. Goodbye, Tampa. Well, I'll still be here, and you four have to visit. Okay? Sure. Hey, Becca, is it almost midnight? Yes, it's 11:55. Only five more minutes till the new year. How about one more song to end 2005? Let's do it. It's been a good year. Country road. We are walking on a country road. <laughs> wow! It is great to be out here in the country. Yeah. Well, today we are in Yilan Yuanshan Xiang, and we're going to be visiting some interesting little farms. Well, it sounds like we're going to have a lot of fun. Well, we are. I think first I'm going to take you to milk some goats, and then we're going to meet some cute. Little honeybees and taste some of their honey, <gasps> and then I think we're gonna eat some freshly fried fish. And after all that, we're going to learn how to make an ecosystem 生态系 Okay, well, did you say that we're going to milk goats? That's right. Okay, let's go. On, On the go. go. <laughs> There. <laughs> well, we're here at the Kudayang Chang, where you can meet and feed some baby goats. Okay, your turn, son. <laughs> Thirsty? Let's your 
<laughs> the bees live in these boxes. These boxes are their beehives, and they're inside them right now, making delicious honey. Wow! They live in those boxes. That's right. In the boxes. In the boxes. Honeycomb in my hands, and this honeycomb has little holes, and each of these little holes has some honey in it. Wow! Well, Campbell, can I try some honey? Sure. Okay. Ooh. There we go. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, this honey is delicious. It's so sweet. Mm-hmm. Andrea, mm. did you know? That it takes a working bee a lifetime of hard work just to make one spoonful of honey like the one you just ate. Huh? Oh, so I just ate the lifetime's work of a bee? Mm-hmm. Oh. Are we going to meet some more new friends? Yes, we are. We're going to meet some cute little flatfish, Xiangyu. Every year, they raise about a hundred tons, if I gongdun, of flatfish here. Whoa, that's a lot of fish. Yeah, well, the water here is very clean, so it's a great place to raise fish. Hey, do you want to try some flatfish? I do. Come on, let's go. What do you think? Hmm, that's really good. Hmm, yes, it's delicious. Hmm. Mm. Hey, do you want to try some? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andrea. Well, we better finish our meal quickly because I want to take you to some place else that's also special. Are we going to meet more friends? <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll see. Hmm. Mm. Wow, that is really good. Hey, look at these little shrimp. These water plants are interesting. It's like a natural aquarium. Shui Zhu Shang. Yeah, well, here at the Shenyang Shoshen Yucheng, we can see a lot of interesting water plants and also learn how to make our own ecosystem. Shen Tai Shi. Really, an ecosystem? Yes, an ecosystem. <laughs> All we need is some sand, some water plants, some shrimp shots, some bacteria, qi qi, some shells, and some water. And then all we do is put this all together in this little glass bowl, and we can have our own little world. Okay, well, Campbell, let's do it. <laughs> okay. Well, we hope you had fun today meeting all of our new friends. We'll see you next time on, on the, the go. go. Bye. Live with Campbell. Hi, 
everyone. Welcome to Live with Campbell. And you're here with Andrea today, but Campbell is again our guest. Welcome back. Hi, everyone. It's great to see you again. Now, Campbell, it seems like you've really had a fun time interviewing a lot of people this year. I have. You know, I've really enjoyed being on Live with Campbell. It's been a great time getting to know our friends a little bit better. So have you ever made any mistakes? While recording, you mean? Yeah. No, I never make mistakes. Are you sure, Campbell? Yes, I am perfect every time. I see. Well, let me show you a few things. <laughs> I want to share with you a few moments where maybe you weren't quite so perfect. And they're pretty funny, too. <laughs> Let's take a look. The teacher where you meet your teachers. Our first teacher is... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> On Live with Campbell, this is beautiful pe- <laughs> Ah, my book! <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about those. Well, they're definitely <laughs> fun to watch again. So tell us about some other fun moments. Well, see, I wasn't the only one that made mistakes. Sometimes my guests would say things that they probably didn't mean to say. Really? Your guests? So do you have a story to share? I do. Let's listen. I was almost going <laughs> to go to the bathroom in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't think Linda meant to say what she said, but it did turn out to be pretty funny. <laughs> Well, this is great to see some of the behind the scenes <laughs> of Live with Campbell. So I'm sure you have some more to share, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, see, sometimes people didn't only say things that were mistakes. Sometimes when they came on, they did some pretty silly stuff. For example, one time Billy, well, you know what? Let's just see what happens. Today, I'm really excited to welcome back Billy Leonard. Hey, Billy. Whoa. Billy, are you okay? <laughs> See, now I don't think Billy meant to fall like that, but it was pretty funny. <laughs> yes, it was funny, and it's been great to see some of the other moments of Live with Campbell that we didn't see every Saturday. <laughs> That's true. Okay, everyone, we hope that you've had fun with us this year on Live with Campbell. We'll see you next year. Love, love, peace. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! Happy, happy New Year! Let's celebrate! <laughs> well, everyone, it's been a great New Year celebration with you. Come back next year. You're going to meet new friends and hear a new story. And we'll still be having lots of fun with English. Thanks for joining us this year on Let's Talk in English. We'll see you next year on PTS and the radio. And, and remember, remember, learning English can be fun. Bye! Learning English can be fun. Open your eyes to the world around. Friends to be fun, let's talk in English. Learning together can be fun. Learning English can be fun. Open your eyes to the world around. Join friends to be fun, let's talk in English. Learning together can be fun. The journey's begun, the journey's begun. Let's talk in English. Learning to get it can be fun. Learning English can be fun. Open your eyes to the world around.